Good afternoon, budding artists, and I hope you have had a lovely day today. So today is day four of our five days quick draws. And I'm not in Daisy's room today, I'm actually at my desk. So I thought I would show you around. Because I know it's super interesting when uh, you wonder, I wonder where Karen does all her art. So I thought I'd show you around and then we'll do Tommy the turtle, okay? So here's my desk and look what came today. This is my really cool clamp, which means I will be able to put my um, phone on the clamp and I'm going to be ready to draw. I'm using watercolour pencils this afternoon with my pencil and rubber. Got my little glass of water with a paintbrush, just a small paintbrush. Um, cup of tea. And then here is where the magic happens, where all my planning work happens. You're a journey there and you're getting there. Remember that. And there's my to-do list. So this is where, this is my little desk. So this is when I'm not in the studio. This is my little desk. And then I want to show you something totally amazing. Look what came today. This is my new laptop. Look at those keys. And why have I got a new laptop? Well, because I am making so many films and so many Facebook lies for you guys. My poor little baby laptop is not um, strong enough. It does not work. So I've had to just bite the bullet and invest a little bit more money, spend a little bit more, more money, and I've got a really cool laptop. Little did I know it would have rainbow keys, which is just fantastic, I love it. And along with that thing there, which I've called Goosey, Goosey Goosey. And that's where I'm gonna clip you in a minute and it will be hanging over my desk. Now I ordered that, ooh, about four weeks ago, but because everybody's doing everything from home, of course there's none, but mine's come today. And so instead of me having a wobbly hand like this, you'll be able to draw and watch me really, really easily. So I'm gonna clip you on and we're gonna see how it goes. I could have just put you on straight away and I could have chatted on a bit of paper, but it's always nice to see a friendly face, isn't it? It's always nice to say, hi, pop in and get everybody settled and, uh, and then I can pop you. And I just don't want you just to look at a piece of paper. That would be a bit dull, wouldn't it? All right, let me, I'm just going to put my glasses up there. I have got contact lenses in. These are my drawing glasses. Do you like my flamingos today? Feeling in a flamingo-y kind of way. So I could have just put you straight in my clamp, but then you wouldn't say hello. And it's important to say hello and connect. Connecting with you. All right, I'm going to put you in my clamp. You're going to wobble a little bit, and then we're going to get drawing. So remember, you need your friend HB. You need Eric the eraser and some colour pencils. And let's get cracking. Okay, flip you around. And I'm going to pop you in my clip which hopefully is going to work. Uh, hang on, I need to put you the other way. There we go. So I'm just going to wobble you around until you get in the right position, which is super cool. Oh my God, I'm loving it. Okay, I'm just going to bring it up a little bit, wobble you back into position. How did, I had this all set up exactly right and then I unclip it. Oh my goodness, now I've dropped you. <laughs> David's laughing. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Bear with me, people. This is the first time I've had my Goosey Lucy clip. All right, straight now. I think we're there. Can you see my piece of paper? Yes. Let's move that light up there. We're going to draw this turtle in a minute. Okay, maybe maybe next time I don't show you. Oh, I keep saying rotate my phone. Oh my goodness me. I thought this was going to be simple. I thought we'd have a little chat and then I'll put you in here and then we'd be good to go. Ugh. It literally only came in the post about 20 minutes ago. All right, I think I've got you. Are you feeling seasick yet? Hopefully. Okay. Just can't get it in the right position now. All right, I think I'm there. I think I'm there. Okie dokes. 
Let's move my light so it hasn't got so much of a shadow. Beautiful, gosh, that seemed like hard work. All right, hopefully you can see my piece of paper. Yay! That was a little bit harder than I expected, but I will get better at practice at that. I didn't have time to actually have a little practice trial because it's only just come through in the post. So look, let's see if it works. Ready? Hello, love, Bess. If you can see that, give me a heart or a thumbs up. Yay! And then I know that you'll be able to see me. I reckon you can see me pretty good. But if I jiggle it around anymore, you guys are gonna vomit probably. <laughs> and I don't want that to happen. Awesome. Okay, so here's the next one. Are you ready to draw? Give me a thumbs up, give me some hearts, let's go. Okay, it's weird talking to you when I can't see you. So all you can see is my hands and it feels like I just wanna go, hello, hello, but I can't. All right, so let's draw. Okay, as soon as we're ready, we're gonna draw. So the first thing I'm gonna do today with drawing is draw the shape of our Tommy the turtle and I'm not gonna mark down the middle, but I want you to have an invisible line with your eyes of where the middle of your paper is. Mine is right there where my little friend HB is, okay? That's where we're gonna, the middle. If you need to do a little dotted line, do it. But if you don't, then just put your pencil there and just go, oh yeah, I can see where it is, okay? Because our head is gonna be up in this corner. So I want you to get up in that top corner, okay? Remember what we did yesterday? We started off, by drawing round a circle and I used, if you remember, when we did our pug, I used this little friend, which is my sellotape. If you want to get him out again, you can. If you want to go freehand, you can, okay? And he's gonna go up in this top corner, all right? So get your rubber ready if you need to. I'll draw around him and then if you want to, it'll make those that want to feel a little bit less like they can't draw or you're worried or whatever. Of course you could draw, but if you want to use it, you can use it, okay? So I'm gonna draw around my sellotape. You could use a 10, se 10 cent piece. If you're in England, you could use a 10 pence piece, whatever you fancy, all right? So that's my, that's my first eye of Tommy the turtle. Now we're gonna draw his head and his head is gonna come out from the top where the eye is. And we're gonna aim for kind of a triangle shape. So look, watch me first. I'm gonna go down and I'm doing it nice and lightly. And I know that my friend said, so this is the little boy that asked for the turtle drawing. Uh, he said, Karen, can you press harder? Because I can't see with your pencil. Well, if I press hard now, I'm gonna get a, a shape that I don't want. So I, I'm gonna hold it up so that you can see it. I'm going to come closer, look, now you can see it, you can see where, it almost looks like a bird's beak, doesn't it? So we've got the big eye, and this is just a guideline, I'm going to rub him out in a minute. Let me pop it back down. Okay, so from the top of our eye, we're going to curve out, and I'm going to try and get to where that triangle is. There we go, so it's a big curvy shape. And then from under the eye, we want to sort of follow that line, but I want to have a curve down and a curve back. Now I've done that, I can rub out that guideline, the triangle guideline, because now we've got the right shape for our turtle. Awesome, so far so good. Underneath the eye, we're gonna put his neck. Let me just move that water out the way. So underneath the eye, we're gonna put the neck and it's gonna go straight down. Probably about two centimeters, I would say. Or there's my little finger, look, it's as long as my little finger. Sometimes using our fingers gives us a really good chance to measure things up. Okay, so we've got our eyeball. We've got the front of our turtle. Now we need to do the underneath mouth. And turtles do have this funny kind of pecky bit because obviously they eat crustaceans and things, don't they, in the sea? 
So underneath we've got his jaw coming underneath and it's going to finish a little bit higher. So we're going to go under and finish there. So he's got this little bit pecking over. Good job, everybody. That's awesome. Now I want to put his eyeball out there. And remember, this week is all about simple, easy drawings that we can all do. We're keeping it simple. We're keeping it quick. And we're keeping it no mess for mum. Simple, quick, no mess for mum. So these are really easy drawings that you would then be able to do on your own. So I'm going to use my little sticky tape and I'm going to put it, look, if I turn it around a little bit, I'm going to put it, this is the back of his head, I'm going to put it just over the back of his head, can you see that? And I'm going to draw around it and it will be the same shape curve as that eye there. It's a bit like a froggy eye, isn't it? Where you've got those two big bulby froggy eyes. A bit like that. And remember, this week, this week, all the our little characters are sort of bobbly head, funky, funky wobbly, big head, cute little characters. We're not trying to draw exactly what they look like in the ocean. That would be a much longer drawing. All right, so I reckon I've done all of that bit. I'm now going to put in the eyeballs and I'm going to do this free. So I'm going to put in an eyeball here. I'm going to do a circle that way. And the same there. That's the iris bit, the colour of the eye. And then we're going to have a pupil and a pupil. The pupil is the black spot in the eye, kids. Good job. So I think we're ready to do the shell. This is one of my favourite bits. If, you look, if you've been to a museum and you've seen a turtle shell, it's so pretty. It has so many lovely shapes and colours and patterns. All right, so we want to give this shell, we're going to go from about where the eye is and we want to give it a big hump, okay? Now, to make sure that I've got it in the right place, I think I'm going to sketch it first, which is what I suggest you guys do. Sketch it in. So a very soft pencil, and I know you can't see this very well, I'm going to lift it up so you can see my sketch. All right. So I've used the side of the pencil. And if I use the side of the pencil, of course, then it comes out really well. It, when, the, when you rub it out, the rubber rubs away. I'm going to turn it around its bottom. I'm going to kind of make it go a little bit straighter. Then I'm going to curve it and go back up to join the neck. I'm going to lift that up for you. And I'm looking to see, does that shape look right? Do I need to make any changes? Am I happy with that shape? Actually, I'm pretty happy with my shape. So I am going to put my pencil nice and hard. I'm gonna turn it round actually and go follow my line, put my pencil really hard. But if you're not happy with your shape, what would you do? Well, you just simply use your rubber, rub out those lines and just make it a better curve, or maybe it's not straight enough along the bottom. Maybe it didn't join up there next to the head. Just use your rubber and rub out the bits that you're not happy with, okay? Just take your time. Nobody's telling you to go quickly. I'm going nice and slow. Am I going okay for you kids? Give me a thumbs up if I'm going okay. I reckon I'm going okay. I reckon we're all doing all right. Okie dokie. Now, if you remember, a shell has a kind of has a kind of lip, doesn't it? Like a curl round it, um, like an edge, I guess. So we're going to put that little bumper. I like that word, a turtle bumper. I think I've just invented something brand new there. We're going to put our turtle bumper around our turtle, and then this means that we've got this lovely shape here for the rest of his neck which is going to come out from about, oh, about there underneath his mouth. And it's just going to curl into his body. And obviously, that's when he pops his little head inside and hides if he wants to. I reckon being a turtle would be a pretty cool thing to be, wouldn't it? Okie dopes. Well, let's put in his legs. So we've done his eyes, we've done his head, we've got his shell, we've done the turtle bumper. Let's put in his legs. I'm going to put this leg in first, one of his front legs. Now, they're a bit like frog's legs or stars, aren't they, that waddle around. Remember, we're talking about simple, quick, no mess. 
I don't want it to be difficult for you, so I'm going to keep it simple and quick, okay? Are you ready to draw? Are you ready to draw? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, simple, ready, here we go. We are going to go from this little corner of the shell, we're going to do a little curve out, and we're going to match that curve on that side. So that's the little leg, and now we need to kind of do this um, little webbed foot. And to do the little webbed foot, we're going to put one toe out and then make it go back in with a curve. And then another toe out and make it go back in with the curve. Round the corner and then that the last little one is more like a thumb. Okay? Now you can't really get this wrong. It, it can't really be wrong because it, it is a funny old weird looking shape. So we're gonna put the left, the another, the um, back leg in now, in behind our turtle head. And we're gonna put one little leg in and curve out. And then curve in and curve out and curve back. Oh, can you see what I've done there? Look, that's terrible. His toe there is way too thin. So let's get out Eric the eraser and let's say, come on, Karen, come on, Bess, get that better. That looks better, doesn't it? In fact, that one looks too thin. And this is why my friend Eric, let's write Eric's name on here. Eric the eraser is a good thing to have. We're okay having an Eric the eraser in our family because it means that I don't get stressed out and I don't get worried. If I make a little mistake, I just get Eric out and in fact i'm going to make that toe a bit bigger as well and we're just going to edit it's like writing a story and rereading it and going mm, that just didn't look very that doesn't sound very good i'm going to write that again and that's what eric does for us okay let's do the back leg the back leg is down the back he's tootling around on the beach maybe he's going to go and see um the pug polly the pug who was on the plane on the beach yesterday when we drew her wasn't she Okay, so the back leg, curve out the back, the same curve just in front, and now we're going to put in his funny in and around and in and around and in. His funny little back leg. That one there looks weird. Going to rub it out. In and around and back. There we go. Now his other back leg is going to be right at the back and actually in this picture you definitely can't see it. So we're not going to put him in. We're going to add his little tail because turtles have these funny little tails like that. And now we want to add the beautiful shell details and I'm going to start off with my shell details here. Usually they have these big kind of rainbow shapes on the outside of your shell. So let's put in those shapes first. And I'm going to tell you that a turtle shell is very much like a thumb. Each shell is like a thumbprint and each one is different and unique to that turtle, tortoise, whichever. So if you've got different shapes to me, I'm fine with that. Absolutely. Because you would have different shapes than me because every turtle is different. Now these ones I've done here at the back, because they, the shell rolls down the back, I've just done just a tiny bit as if it's just the top of the shell shape just showing, okay? So that's why you only see a little bit. Now you can put in some other big patches and kids, put in whichever shape you want. And I have seen people put like um, swirly lines on their shells. I've seen people do stripey kind of shells and I don't think you can go wrong, can you? I reckon you should put whatever you like. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna color in our beautiful turtle. So I'm gonna start off and today we are going to use water with our watercolor pencils because he's a, a beautiful turtle. So I'm gonna start off, I'm just gonna paint, um, sorry, color in the blacks of his eyes. And I want him to have really cool green eyes. So I'm going to do his greeny colour there. 
I'm now going to colour all of his body. Now, I want him to have a two-tone. Now, remember, if we're using water with our watercolour pencils, we can only use water at the very end. The good thing about using watercolour pencils is that you can scribble like this. So it means you can colour really quickly because when you put the water on, it colours it all in for you. So you remember when we were colouring yesterday, I was having to go really carefully and really carefully around the lines. But when you're using watercolour pencils, you don't. You've heard me say that before, haven't you? Which is why I think they're so much fun. Also, because you can blend colours, which is what I'm going to do today. Now, we did blend the colours. If you remember yesterday with Polly the Pug, we used brown and grey to create a body colour. So you can blend them when they're dry, but not in the same way. You don't get the same blend. It just becomes a dry blend, and that's okay. So that's all my green done. And it doesn't look that good at the moment. But what I want to do is add a bit of blue with it. So I'm going to add a bit of blue over the top. And again, look how loose I'm doing it. Really loose colouring in, not being very careful. Oh, that should have been white. Never mind, it's blue now. I wonder if I can rub it out with a rubber. Should we have a look? Look at that. Who knew you could rub out coloured pencil with a rubber? I just made a mistake then because that bit there was his eye and it should have been left white. Okay. All right, let's get that blue. Round the corner, round his little face. And do some on his legs and feet. Down along there. And I love that you look at this and go, oh no, Karen, it looks awful. And yet in a minute, I know, because I've done this so many times before, that it's going to look fantastic. All right, now the last thing I want to do is add some shade. So to add shade, I'm going to add some dark green. And remember where I showed you, it's where the creases are. Where you have creases, that's where you have shadows. So we're going to have a little shadow there on his back leg. And a little shadow there where the, sh the um, shell would give a shadow. The shell would give a shadow there around the neck and around that back foot. And then there would be a shadow underneath his head, under his neck, where his sh shadow, where his head would be a shadow. All right, now before we do all the water, we're gonna carry on coloring. Now, because I've got a very green turtle, I want his shell to be beautiful reds and oranges. So this is the colors I'm gonna select. I'm gonna go for a kind of maroony color, a red and orange, and I think a bit of pink. So that's my color. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the inside bit, the maroony color. So this is the deep part of the shell. You could make your shell exactly the right color if you want to, you could Google a picture of a turtle and you could see what color he should be. But I always think when you're doing happy pictures like this, you should really, really have your own ideas. You know, let it be whatever you want it be. If you want it to be pinks and purples, make it pinks and purples. Okay, I'm gonna add some red into that color. So that's gonna be the color of the deep part of the shell. And the other bits are the raised parts. And the reason why I've gone with red is I just think it's really bright against the green. So I've gone with the total contrast. I'm gonna put big swirls in my turtle shell. You don't have to, you could put any pattern you want. I'm just gonna put these big swirls like this. Last year, I took the children up to the Great Barrier Reef and we saw turtles actually in the sea and it was lovely. Okay, now I'm doing kind of a star shape. Can you see that? So in the middle of my swirl, I'm doing a star shape. And you never, what's exciting about using watercolour pencils is that you never really know what it's going to look like until you put the water on it. So right now, we're just doing this patterning, but in a minute, when I put the water on, it's gonna change the look of this completely. I bet you can't wait to see it. I can't wait to see it, it's gonna be fantastic. 
If you're using felt tip pens, you can choose your colors for that. If you're using these pencils and you wanna put some spots and dots on, you could use that. You could use felt tip pens afterwards. You'd have to wait until your paper dried, but you could definitely use felt tip pens afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna fill in the main part of that part of the shell, these like sections with yellow. And I'm hoping, and I've never done this before, but I'm hoping when I put the water on, it's all gonna blend and make almost like a tie-dye effect. That's what I'm planning in my mind, but I'm gonna be honest with you children, I don't know what it's gonna be like. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm conscious that every time I color really hardly with my pencil, my little tripody thing, my funny arm, Goosey Lucy, is a bit wobbly. So I'm trying not to press too hard. I'm just gonna add a little bit of yellow, look, in my turtle here as well. Just on the brighty areas. Let's see what that might look like. There we go, just a little bit there. Okay, then I've just got this bit of the lip to go and the bumper, and I think I'm gonna do the bumper in orange. Now you can decide, is your turtle walking on the sand? Is he swimming in the ocean? If he's swimming in the ocean, you might wanna put some waves in. He might be swimming. He looks a little bit like Grab Shell, dude, from what's that film called? Finding Nemo. Noggin, ha <laughs> ha. Looks a bit like him, doesn't he? With a big bulby eyes. So you can just add in some water, some little wave marks. And you can just scribble your the water, because in a minute, like I say, we're gonna use our watercolor and it will magically look amazing. You just have to trust me. Have I ever let you down? I do sometimes, I know. I'm not perfect. Okay, just adding in a bit more blue. Now you can't do this with pens because you'll have a really scribbly picture. And if there's one thing that I don't like very much when my students are at the studio with me and they're coloring is when they do silly scribbles. Now don't mind with this because that's what these pens are supposed to do. They're supposed to be, when they're watercolor, you can scribble. But if you're trying to do a very beautiful, if you've done all the hard work of doing a fabulous drawing, if you just scribble, it ruins it. This is different. This is different. I'm gonna add a little bit of green into my blue because it's the ocean. Watercolor pencils, I've told you before, I love them. All right, I'm ready for the magic to happen. Are you ready? Are you ready to see the magic? Let the magic happen. That's my drum roll. Okay, let's get my water. I'm at home, look, it's just a regular glass from my kitchen. And this is, so I'm gonna start, when I start doing the water on this picture, I'm gonna start with the bits that I don't want to blend very much. So I'm gonna start with these really cute little green eyes and I'm not spreading the water around very much because I don't want the eyes to blend, okay? I just want the color to stay where that color would be. Same with the black, you just want the black to be in the black area. And just like normal paint, if you've used black, you definitely need to wash your brush out, okay? Otherwise that black is gonna go on the other area. Okay, let's see what happens with his body. So we put blue, you can see that that black has just bled there, that's annoying. Never mind, don't stress. We put blue and green together. We've put some yellow on his nose and we just do circular motions with our, with our paintbrush. Now, can you see how different this is than when we did our toucan the other day? I used exactly the same brushes, but of course, when I did our toucan, I was dipping the pencil, not brushes, pencil. I used exactly the same pencil, but instead of using uh, drawing on it first, I was dipping the pencils in the water and then drawing with them wet. And what you get when you use, when you do it this way, you get a much softer finish. So you get a much softer finish with your paint if you color the whole thing first 
and then you use your paint your paintbrush to blend the colors together all right N neither is right or wrong it's just different ways of approaching it and sometimes it's really fun to try different pictures using different things and trying different ways because you'll find one way looks good for one type of drawing and another way looks good for another type of drawing. And it's all about experimenting and understanding what your materials can do. Because once you know what they can do, or you can do all sorts of stuff. All right, so that's, that's my turtle pretty much all blended. You've got that lovely dark patch under his chin. You've got the shadows there, which came out really nice. And now I'm going to give it a really good wash because we're doing yellows and reds and oranges. I'm going to start off with the red area, the darkest bit, which is in between the shell. So I'm just painting really carefully. Really carefully. You have to kind of use your brush to agitate the colour. Agitate means move the colour, move the water around to kind of dissolve the pencil without kind of making it go too crazy. Okay, this one I'm just going to spin in a spiral because I want it to be blended and I want it to just merge into a faint pattern. Okay, so you can still see the pattern but you get more of a merging colour. That's the plan with this. And hopefully it should all be kind of orangey red. You can see the pattern of the shell without it being too drawing, too bright. That's looking great. It's exactly good. Kind of blobby. Beautiful. Okay, now my background, of course, is the sea. So I'm just going to be really, really loose with my paint. And I'm going to make it all splodge around. And where I didn't put any pencil on, you'll find that the water is blue enough. If you just keep moving that water around, it's blue enough so you get these lovely dark patches where the waves are and the rest of it will just be beautiful pale blue, which is exactly what you want, isn't it? Because the sea has patches of pale blue and dark blue and it has areas where the sun comes through. Just coming round there, round his nose, round his foot. You do have to let these pictures, once you've put the water on, you need to let them dry on a flat surface because it will drip just like paint. So although it doesn't make a huge mess like acrylics, you do need to let, let it just dry somewhere, okay kids? Don't be carrying it. I know that it's tempting to go, Mom, run into the kitchen holding it, but then it will drip on the carpet and then I'll get a message from Mum saying, Karen, excuse me, excuse me, Bess, you said to me it was not painting today. And then I'll get told off. I don't want that. So I'm just doing the bumper on our turtle. And there he is. That is my really cute little turtle. Tommy the turtle, all drawn, all painted. He's swimming in the sea. I reckon he looks shoo, swimming around. I think he looks really good. Hopefully you've enjoyed that. So, oh my goodness, we're nearly at the end of our five day week of drawing. Tomorrow is our last day. So we'll have to make sure we've got a really nice snack or something so that I can have a bit of a party with you. I'm just gonna take this down. We're gonna flip it around and I'm gonna say goodbye. Look, there's, there's Goosey Lucy, that was what you were clipped in. That came today. I'm sorry it was so wobbly. I obviously have to practice much, much more with that. But I will get, get better and I will be able to, um, to do it without so many wobbles. But anyway, I hope you have a lovely Thursday. I will see you at 3.30 tomorrow, guys, for the last one. We're doing a really cool kind of Picasso-inspired cat in bright, bright colours. I'm going to be using my watercolour pencils again so we can get some blending, an ombre effect. Ombre means it blends from one colour to another colour to another colour. A bit like our sloth, but we're going to blend it with the water. All right? Send me your pictures. I can't wait to see them, and I'll see you soon. See you tomorrow. Bye.